Hey guys, this is Stacy Rossetti. Thank you so much for hanging out with us today. I look forward to seeing you in all of the podcasts that are coming up. Right now I have a special guest with me. It's a woman investor here in the Georgia area. And um, she's also one of my students, which is completely awesome. And what we're going to do is we're going to talk a little bit about her story and I kind of get an, an, a, her perspective on um, investing in real estate as a woman. Uh, that's the focus today. And I want to say thank you, Rachel, for coming to talk to us. And um, how are you doing? Pretty good. Thanks for having me, Stacy. Good, good, good. So now that you're here, um, so kind of give everybody a, a quick a synopsis of like, uh, you know, who you are and your real estate investing story. Okay, sure. So I uh, like Stacy, I'm a mom as well. Um, I do work a full time W2 job by day. And I say I work a job by day and I do my real estate investing by night. But um, I absolutely love it. Uh, after graduating from school, um, had a considerable amount of student loan debt. We worked really hard and paid it off. And then we started to try to analyze where um, we can start to build our financial freedom and financial independence. And so out of everything that was out there, and there are so many opportunities and avenues to invest, but the one that made the most sense to us, the one that we understood quite frankly, the best was real estate investing. So my husband and I, we did a lot of research. We consumed a lot of information, read a lot of books, listened to a, a bunch of podcasts. And we just kind of took a leap of faith. Um, one day when we found a property that was within our budget, within our price range, we went ahead and made an offer on it. And the rest is history. So really excited about that. Um, just kind of taking that leap of faith and taking action. And so for me, moving the needle is doing that first deal and then uh, growing from there. So tell us a little bit about wh where you invest and, and actually that first deal as well. Sure. So um, we wanted to invest locally. Um, we looked in outside areas such as Alabama, Tennessee, and we actually drove out to those areas to see properties that were really um, just really, really affordable and budget friendly. And we're really excited about some of those deals. Uh, we personally live in the uh, south of Atlanta in a city called Peachtree City, Georgia. Um, the area, the prices are a bit higher uh, than uh, some of those uh, more rural areas. However, when we uh, went to see the property and uh, no offense, but they were scary. Okay, $18,000 properties, $25,000 properties, they were quite scary. And so coming into real estate um, without a really robust background of contracting or knowing how to DIY a lot of things, um, I say I'm a math lead. I don't, I know spreadsheets, I know science, I know math. I, I really, I can paint some, but that's about it. And still having a full-time job, the level of effort it would take to renovate those types of properties, um, it, it was such a barrier. So we started to say, okay, perhaps let's look closer to home. And then we found this deal and we knew it was a great deal. I had been uh, really laser focused on finding a property and just knowing the area, it was uh, on the market for about $100,000 less than what you know would sell, what the houses were worth in that particular area in Peachtree City. And I made an offer immediately. And so um, the big issue with the home, the home was um, the owner had passed away. The son was selling the home, had been sitting there for six months, and he just got tired of maintenance and lawn, and it wasn't doing anything. So he went ahead and put it on the market for such a low price, but it did require a roof replacement. And so I, I'm of the philosophy that everything is figure outable, uh, you know, put in for myself, purchasing a, a home for ourselves, we would probably have shied away from something like that in the beginning. But as an investor, you think differently, right? So a roof, so how much does that cost? And you assign a number to it and you're like, okay, it can be done for such and such amount. Same thing with electrical, same thing with plumbing. So it's not necessarily as daunting or as um, 
you know, heartburn inducing as one would think, but we got the roof replaced. We turned into, turned it into a luxury rental and we actually, uh, gross three times the amount that we would if it were to be just a standard uh, long-term landlord rental. Well, and so talk about that a little bit too, because I love that you're in this. And it's actually, it's a niche that really a lot of people don't even think about is, is the luxury rental. So that's kind of what you ended up doing. So kind of talk a little bit about that. Absolutely. So my biggest driver um, for going into the luxury short-term rental arena was trying to re recapture or regain those years that I had spent, you know, eight, nine years paying off student loan debt and feeling kind of behind. And so um, my goal was to kind of get that exponential, extraordinary growth uh, in my real estate business. And again, research, a lot of research, a lot of reading and a lot of partnering with um, mentors such as yourself, Stacey, um, I realized that there is a three times income increase with luxury rentals, short-term rentals versus, versus um, the long-term standard landlord rentals. Uh, it does require more effort. For instance, we furnish our rentals uh, the turnover is going to be higher as expected. Uh, for, uh, for instance, some of our guests stay anywhere from three weeks to six months. So it's not going to be an annual lease. So I would say those are the things that can be a little bit of a challenge. Mm -hmm. However, what I love is that um, I know that most recently there's been a struggle with um, COVID and the tenant laws in some states where uh, a lot of evictions are happening or going to happen. Well, in the luxury rental industry, I really don't have to deal with that because um, my tenants or my guests, they pay up front. Prior to entering the home, the whole bill is paid for the most part. And so, um, and that's great for someone who works <laughs> full time. Um, I don't necessarily have to manage uh, that guest. So that's one of the biggest perks for me. Well, let's talk about like kind of how, you know, as you as a woman, uh, how do you balance? I know you have like a W-2 job, you have a family and you do real estate investing. So kind of how do you balance all that? And yeah, absolutely. And that's something that I think I'm still working on the balance of that and self-care, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so um, Absolutely. A delegation is key. So for instance, I have um, an assistant that sometimes help will hop on and respond to questions of the guests. And that's very helpful because um, we want to provide excellent timely service. Um, our bread and butter is getting really high ratings. So timely response, even if something goes wrong, if you respond to your tenant or your guest in a timely manner and you work on remediation, that's, that's worth it for them. Mm -hmm. So delegation is key. Um, if I need someone to come in to do some of my household work, I've had to get some help in that way as well. Good. I you know? Yeah, yeah <laughs> absolutely. Work either. Yeah. I mean, it, it is it what out. it is. What was that? Is it just delegate it out. Delegate it out. Delegation is key. And so, you know, working on putting, you know, putting myself first sometimes, you know, add myself to my calendar. Okay, this is relaxation time, hair and nails time. This is, you know, family time. And I'm trying to stick to that. So it's something that I'm still working on. But, you know, with every several months, it gets better and better and looking forward to financial independence and freedom where I don't necessarily have to work a full W-2 and then some. Yes. Yes. And so, and tell me, so, so you, when did you start uh, in, in the real estate investing world? And then so like, would you see kind of any changes that you, over the course of the, of that period that you've been doing this? Yeah. I mean, I can speak specifically to the luxury rental world. So I started a couple of years ago, just about two years ago, not too long. Um, and at that point, we actually had a lot of guests visiting uh, for shorter terms, shorter periods of time. And it was really, we stayed booked at shorter periods of time. So in the luxury rental, short-term rental realm, 
Right now, I would say the monthly stays are going to be a little bit more common as opposed to, you know, a few days, a few weeks, it's going to be monthly or three, every three months. So that's definitely a change. And additionally, we've been able to cater to a lot of the um, medical professionals that are uh, here to help for relief work. So say it's a dentist or a doctor or, you know, a couple of nurses. So really um, catering to that population and that guest. So it's a little bit different in um, how we set up based on that clientele, but that is the biggest difference that I'm seeing in terms of the short-term rental luxury rental. Also, um, there's a, I think there's like post-COVID fever where people are kind of getting tired of staying in their own home. They just want to go to somebody else's house. Yes. <laughs> and so they will they will rent for a few a week or so we get some random ones that just want to be somewhere else and so yeah they can't go to europe right they can't go to asia africa any of the other continents really and so um domestic travel is key and and a lot of folks may think we took a hit in the luxury rental short-term rental arena but we really haven't because domestic travel just went you know it spiked up exponentially. Yes. Well, you know, I did the, you know, we traveled around the United States for like, yep. and all we did was just stay in the Airbnb. And then the truth is, and truth is, is that there is not enough Airbnb in the world. There's yeah. not enough vacation short-term rental in the world. Cause in, the, in some places we really struggled at trying to find a place to stay. There was, right. yeah. yeah. And right now, not a lot of people want to stay in a hotel that's dense and populated. So Airbnb, short-term rentals is really what folks are looking for. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Good. Mm-hmm. Okay, good. All right. And is there anything final, let's see, that we can think of? Do you think any kind of uh, maybe some pointers for any women out there on how they're getting, they're trying to get started and how they can get to where you're at right now? Sure. Um, absolutely. So I would really um, recommend just infusing yourself with information. So say a woman, she's just getting started, she's interesting in getting into real estate investing, read as many books as possible, um, surround yourself with as many goodwill uh, mentors and coaches as possible. And I know um Sometimes, you know, there there's some great mindset coaches out there. Tony Robbins, you may not be able to meet him in person, but he has so much literature out there. Mm-hmm. Right. And yeah. so same thing with real estate. You may not be able to meet all of the you know key players in the industry. However, there are podcasts, there are books, there are local RIAs where you can start connecting and making those connections and just listening and learning and learning. And then at a certain point, you have to take action. You know, however small it is, do something, do a deal, um, connect with someone, maybe partner with someone, the right person and do a deal. And, and the rest is going to come into place. Yeah, that's perfect. That's true. And I completely, completely uh, agree with you, right? Yeah, you got to just like surround your, yourself with the people that you want to become. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And then, and, you know, and just take action. Yep. Awesome. Good. Well, thank you so much, Rachel, for your time. Well, thanks for having me. This is fun. So yes, excited. You. Okay, good. Well, I'm sure we'll see each other again and we'll talk soon. Okay. Take Absolutely. care. All right. Thank you everybody for watching and I will see you at the next video.